Hello everybody, I'm George from Ireland. Here I am in London, the Belgravia area, one of the most desirable addresses in Londinium. And behind me is the house of Sir John Lubbock, um, later uh, the first Lord Averbury. So um, he was a liberal politician in the late 19th century and he's best known for his, uh, well, bank holidays he introduced, which some people call St. Lubbock's Day. For instance, the August bank holiday, the last Monday in August is a day off work here. It's not in other countries. I remember some French tourists meeting them here on the train from Stansted a couple of years ago, and uh, that, that was news to them. And uh, he's the one who invented words like Paleolithic, Neolithic. He was a real polymath, not bad for a chap who hadn't been to university. So he was born in, in 1834. Um, in Kent and uh, he was a, a third generation banker. They had their own bankers called Lubbock & Co. It's long since been uh, absorbed into Coots & Co, which is a very pucker bank. Make a bit of a fuss over if you go in there. And Coots & Co used to have only three branches, one on Eaton High Street, one on Oxford High Street and one on Fleet Street in London. So you had to have at least £50,000 open an account there and blah blah blah. So everything was very plush in there. But uh, so what else about um, the, the Lubbocks? So he left Eton and he, he joined the family business straight away, but obviously at a, at a fairly high uh, position. So they were very affluent, he had a number of siblings, um, and um, then he'd made his fortune in that, even though he was quite wealthy to begin with, and could devote himself entirely to politics, um, standing in the liberal interest for Maidstone in Kent, because that was near the family's country seat, and the local connections are thought to be important. Uh, wasn't initially successful, latterly he was elected, um, for Mason, and subsequently he was elected Member of Parliament for London University. So um, until 1950, um, universities had additional members of Parliament. So if you, uh, if you had graduated from university, you could vote um, for that, your, your university MP, not just your, the constituency that you actually lived in. So that was a, a change as well, that was abolished. Um, so you didn't actually have to have gone to that university to, have, to, to be the MP for it. Um, and you had to graduate. It's not whilst at university you had an additional vote. Um, okay. Um, anyway, so uh, he represented them um, at least until till 1900. Uh, and he was fascinated by archaeology and paleontology and so forth. Um, later on, he was part of the Anglo-German Friendship League. This is in the run-up to the First World War because there was a lot of Teutonophobia and there were various novels like The Invasion of 1910. There was um, Erskine Childers uh, published a novel entitled The Riddle of the Sands about some no-warning invasion by Germany. They hadn't even declared war or anything like that. There was When William Came. So various writers were doing this. Rudyard Kipling was warning that um, Prussian Junkerdom and militarism uh, was an existential threat to the British Empire. And he, some people fear that this sort of... Um, ridiculous uh, chauvinistic jingoism and, and anti-German bigotry was raising the spectre of war. It would be a self-fulfilling prophecy. And of course, there were some ranters in Germany who were at the same game, who were just vociferating uh, against the United Kingdom, perfidious uh, um, uh, Albion, and were coming out with all sorts of um, anglophobic uh, screeds. So um, th this invective from either side was really causing disharmonious relations and making more war more likely. And indeed, it came to pass. Now, um, he was ennobled as Lord Averbury, so perhaps luckily for him, he didn't see, live to see all his efforts brought to grief because, of course, he, he died in 1913, the year before the First World War erupted, which really nobody saw coming in the United Kingdom, that, well, that the UK was going to be involved because um, when the Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in Sarajevo, they were saying, even if there is a European war, happily, that Britain will be no more than a spectator. Uh, and um, even when, when, when Belgium was invaded, at the beginning of that cabinet meeting, there was only Churchill and two other liberals who thought that the United Kingdom ought to go to war. Within an hour, the cabinet was unanimous that they were going to go to war. But Averbury didn't live to see that. So he was happily married, and his uh, union was blessed with several uh, healthy and sprightly progeny. And so one of his bonny baby boys later grew up to inherit the title, become the second Lord Averbury. Lord Averbury is even to this day. So there remained liberals um, in the House of Peers. They were all hereditary peerages. Only in 1958 that uh, life peerages were invented. And so uh, Eric Lubbock, his grandson, was ele elected Liberal MP for Orpington in a sensational upset in, I think, 1962, where the Liberals are a very low ebb, having only half a dozen MPs in the whole realm. And Orpington was considered to be a rock-solid Conservative constituency, a very affluent suburb of London. Uh, so that's just a little bit about um, Lord Averbury. I remember when I was a schoolboy in the science block, that's Queen's Schools, seeing a big poster about him, about celebrated Old Etonian scientists, and reading about it. It's one of the very first heard about him. 
So you can see from um, the size of the house, this is being one of the most expensive districts in London town, that they were not short of a few bob. Well, that's enough from me, so please write to me, uh, well, subscribe to me, and um, follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, TikTok, I'll try to get on to, and book lots of lessons for me in history, politics, religious studies, citizenship, French, English literature, English language, English as a foreign language, anything like that. I'm a tour guide in London, I help people with essays, theses, dissertations, uh, and uh, so on. Interview practice. Goodbye.